Hello, welcome to Crystal Core Skills. In this video, we are going to take a look at angles in geometry. We are going to have a look at uh, what an angle an angle is, and we are also going to take a look of how to uh, how to to represent how to represent an angle an angle and also we're going to have a look at uh, various types of angles which are out there types of angles angles in geometry in geometry so uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to crystal core skill channel uh, so that you get a bullet uh, a video uh, new videos that are coming and uh, share it as well with your friends as well as give some comments you know comments are very important because we learn from the mistakes and uh, we learn from each other so your comment will really be very helpful so let's get started what is an angle what is an angle what is an angle so angle is a part is the part is an area under two lines you know when two lines or two ray intersect and enclose by an arc it form what is called an angle so that area is an angle the measure of this angle is done in degree because this part symbolizes a circle and an arc of a circle and splitting it into pieces form the size of this angle which is measured in degree because the smallest bits that are splitted represents the unit of degree for example if this one is splitted let's say to 10 20 30 40 so this would be like 40 degree because it has been splitted into 40 degree so that is what defines an angle, an area under two intersecting lines, which is at close by an arc of a circle. So how do you present angle? Yes, this is the area where there's a lot of fallacies. Uh, most of the time, you know, it's okay to say this ray and ray intersect at point A, and we have point B there and C, so you can say angle BAC is some value or to say ABC is an angle. But when you leave it like that without any uh, enclosure there, it is not an angle. It's not complete. For it to be complete, you have to enclose it with that bit of the circle in order to make a complete angle. So that is a perfect presentation of an angle. But if you leave it like like that, I mean, if you leave it like, let's say, A, I mean, B, and C, if you leave it like that without enclosing that, that is not an angle because an angle has to be quantified. So if you leave it like that, it will be like angle without quantity. An angle, at least even zero is an angle. So if you leave it without quantification, that means it's not an angle. And that is one of the fallacies in presenting the angle. This leads us to uh, how to come up with some types of angle. Types of angle. So the first one, we can present a line or a ray with uh, just an, an edge like that. This is a ray. So on this ray, we know we know uh, there's a segment there, and this segment could be modeled as a, as the radius or a radius of a circle such that we can start uh, substanding or subtending or, or lifting up part of the circle from here. But at this point here, we can assume that uh, the, the no part of the circle has been raised up. Therefore, the angle is zero degree. So this is our number one type of angle, which is known as zero degree or zero angle. So the first type of angle is zero angle. So the second type of angle that we're going to look at comes actually from that definition of zero degree. So we know from here we are totally grounded at zero degree. 
Now what you're going to do from here is to lift up an arc of a circle. So this is an arc of a circle with some radius there. So an arc sub sub subtends an angle, an angle there. But this one is a, is an angle by itself. So just assume that angle is this is, is the same as the other one. So an arc is sub subtended here now. So we have some sort of angle theta because there's some kind of measurement. So uh, we will have another ray there and that ray there. They intersect at that point and they are enclosed by that part of a circle giving us a perfect angle. So that angle there is called, uh, such an angle like that is called an acute angle. Acute angle. So that is our number one, uh, number two angle. So acute angle is that angle which is obviously greater than zero. As you can see, we have lifted it up. So it's greater than zero, but less than 90 degree. This leads us to uh, the third type of angle, which is, um, is called an obtuse. Obtuse, uh, obtuse angle. But before looking at obtuse angle, let us look at uh, um, right angle, which is number four, right angle, right angle. Right angles actually uh, comes as a result of doing our, our same movement when you lift up the arc of a circle and you go all the way here then our ray will come and stand somewhere here and as you can see we now extended this part of the circle to form a bigger a much bigger angle but if the theta if the angle is exactly at this line here we call that angle right angle because theta at this point is equal to 90 degree anything below 90 degree is is obviously acute angle so when you go above 90 degree the moment you pass 90 degree you are in a different zone and that zone my friend is what we are going to we're going to say here that is called an obtuse angle so obtuse angle is that angle which is theta is actually greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree so you continue moving like here from here you move all the way there to form an angle there so that angle which is greater than 90 degree but um, but uh, less than 180 is called obtuse angle so anything above 90 for example you start measuring an angle from zero could stop there or it could stop there it could stop there it could stop there could go all the way down there to somewhere there all the angle measurement here is 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 for example if it's less if it's if it's above 90 degree you call it obtuse if it's less you call it acute angle so this brings us to the fifth type of angle which is going to be we are going to get it in the same way uh, let's say we are moving from zero this time we are moving all the way down there instead of stopping at 90 we are now here with our arrow here so as you can see we have two arrows and that defines a perfect perfect straight line a straight line is defined by two arrows and that my friend that part will become our theta now because theta is completely a half a circle from there as you can see and we have our straight line here that angle is called a straight a straight angle or straight line uh, straight line angle if you like and it is at this point theta is exactly 180 degree so that is a straight angle that's why any angle along the straight line is equal to 180 degree and the total angle any linear angle along the straight line must add up to 180 degree. 
So that brings us to another type of angle, which is going to be our number six. Type number six. Number six, we can continue with our movement from the same from the same point zero. We are going to go around. Uh, we're going to pass where 90 is. We're going to pass there. We are going as soon as you pass 180. You are in a different zone, so our arrow now will be here. So the second ray will now be here instead of being there. We are moving it here, and that becomes our theta. Now theta is bigger than 180 degree, but still less than 360. And such an angle is called a reflex. A reflex. A reflex angle. So reflex angle is any angle theta which is greater than 180 degree but less than 360 degree. So such an angle is called uh, reflex angle. So that brings us to the six, the seventh type of the angle. And the seventh type of angle that you're going to see now is called um, is called let us define it first from our ray there we are going to start from zero degree now we are going to go like that we are going to continue going we're going to pass 90 there come on we're going to pass our 360 from the, i mean 180 degree we are going to carry on we're going to pass that bit and now we are going to go all the way around so this completes our circle now, as you can see, an angle is a complete circle, and a complete circle like this is our theta now. So theta is now a complete circle, which is 360 degree. So 360 degree is the total angle in a circle, in a complete circle. And that, my friend, is the reason why circle is used to define any kind of angles and when you are defining angles or specifying angle you must use uh, that sign there to indicate that small bit of the circle that symbolizes a specified or a defined angle that you're coming up with so this my friend tells you how important a circle or circle is in geometry and uh, in defining different kind of angles like here now we have a complete angle which is our angle number seven it's called complete complete angle angle number seven but that's not all we have another one number eight our angle number eight is called um, let's say we have our ray there still but this time we are going to reuse what we have already defined. For example, we are going to get some angle from uh, from uh, the right angle. Now, if we draw another line there, uh, then we will have some kind of, uh, let's say we have A, we have B, we have C. We will define some two angle there, alpha and beta, with our right angle there. Now, we know that we already have a triangle uh, B A C at with a right angle degree there at A such that if we add A I mean uh, angle angle alpha plus beta plus angle B A C we get uh, uh, 180 degree but we already have that one as our right angle so we want the value of that one so alpha plus beta is equal to 90 so any angle that adds up to 90 is called co complementary angle so angle alpha and beta are called complementary angles these two angles here that one and that one they are complementary angle because they add up to 190 i mean to, to 90 degrees so that when we add it to the right angle they add up to three i mean to 180 which is a total angle in a triangle so when you add alpha plus beta plus 
90 you get 180 degrees but the sum of these two angles must give 90 degrees and any angles that sum up to 90 degrees are complementary angles and that the ninth type the ninth ninth type of triangle i mean of angle that you can come up with is um what is called adjacent 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 angle so adjacent angle we're going to use the same principle we're going to have a ray there and then we're going to have another ray there and then we're going to have our right angle ray there so let's say we have a b c and d such that we can make angle alpha and beta there you can see we are deriving some angles from right angles at the moment and uh, we have done all the first seven angles using uh, the concept of the circle and we are still using the same concept plus what we have created now to get more angles now we have angles beta and angle theta i mean angle alpha and beta there but there are two angles in one now we have one vertex and uh, we know that this angle angle b a c and angle c a c a d b a c and c a d uh, they share the same vertex and they share the same side and because of that they are called adjacent 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 angles because they share the same vertex and they share the same the same side and that ray there is shared by all of them that's why it's called adjacent so I, this leads us to uh, angle number 10 remember we were just working for angle under 90 there now we are going to see what parallel lines offer to us when uh, we are talking about angles in geometry let's say we have our parallel line there I mean uh, a straight line not parallel line at this time so we have a straight line there and some uh, segment by sector which is also a line uh, let's assume that it bisects a line at, at point A with that angle theta and uh, another angle beta so as we have seen previously any angle along the straight line is 180 degrees so if you have more than one angles along the straight line we need to add up those angles and their sum must give us 180 degree like if we say beta plus theta we must get 180 degree so any angle any angles that add up to 180 degree any angles they are called um, they are called supplementary angles so angle beta and angle theta are called supplementary angles they are called supplementary angles because they are they are, they are their linear combination give us 180 degrees so beta is supplementary angle theta is supplementary angle because when you combine the two beta plus alpha you get 180 degrees so that leads us to a special type of uh, supplementary angle because we have uh, supplementary angle is our angle number 10 supple supplementary angles and the angles that are to 180 degree now we can have as many types of supplementary angles as possible which comes as a result of parallel lines for example if you have parallel lines like this and we have another line segment that bisect these parallel lines we can have angle a angle b angle c angle d angle f angle g angle h b 
this is the H I angle I you see okay A B A B C D okay E let's say F <laughs> G H so we have like uh, angle A A B C D E F G H yeah so when you have angle like that, we can now derive uh, formulas of supplementary angles from this. For example, any angle along a straight line we know is supplementary. AB is supplementary because if you take that line, they are supplementary, they are supplementary, supplementary. If you take that line, that one is supplementary, that one is supplementary, that one. So that's why this is a family of supplementary angle. So from this family, we can get what is called uh, the first one. Let's say this D and F. D and F is what is called um, um, interior interior angle. Um, interior interior angles. Uh, the same thing is E uh, C and D. I mean C and E. So they are all interior angles. Why? Because they are they are found under under or inside the parallel lines and then we have angle a b and then we have d i mean g and h we have a b g h these angles are called x um i would say they're called uh, exterior the exterior angle so this one is our angle number 11, number 12, exterior angle and interior angle. And we can also still have another angle from here, which is, uh, let's say, angle C and A. So angle C and A is called uh, vertical, vertical, vertical opposite angles and this is our angle number 13 so vertical opposite angles are angles which share the same they share the same the same vertex the same vertex and they share a common line as we have seen we have seen in the adjacent angle so angle a a share the same vertex with angle c so they are they are vertically opposite and the same is with angle G and F even D and B they are also they are also vertical of uh, vertically opposite so this one and that one and that one that they are vertically opposite, uh, opposite to one another the best way to know it is to, I mean to pinpoint it just to kind of like draw another line like that to get the vertical object i mean the vertical angles and similarly you can use like the z kind of z letter here to get another angle yet again which is called uh, alternate 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 angles alternate angles this is our angle uh, one, this is 13 there this is 14 so alternate angles are those angles which are found along this line but on the opposite of this long this line when it crosses the, the other parallel line for example from here we have our c there so when you come down and then cross this line instead of having another angle there like that we are going to consider that one to be vertically uh, vertically uh, i would say to be an alternate angle to, to 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 see so f is an alternate angle to uh to c that's why when you draw like a z a z kind of fashion you will locate c there and you will locate f there as our alternate angle so angle C and angle F are alternate angle and we can also have alternate interior when they are underneath the 
the the parallel lines and alternate exterior like that one and uh, like angle a and angle g angle a and angle g uh, alternate alternate exterior exterior and uh, this one uh, alternate interior angles so you can see uh, we can have another family like uh, when you look at the same let, let me draw another another picture when you look at at the same uh, parallel line we have uh, angle B we have A there we have C we have D we have E we have F we have G we have H now when you consider this again uh, you can see that we have a pattern there like an L with that angle A and then another similar pattern here when you follow this same line coming down with F. So these two angles are called corresponding corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. This one here. They're called corresponding corresponding angles. They are called corresponding angles because they correspond exactly at the same position along this line and the parallel line as you come down so that my friend is um is the end of our family of um supplementary angle apart from that we can also get another angle because we have interior we have exterior we have alternate we have vertical yeah, we have vertical. Yeah, that is it. But that is it. We have about uh, yeah corresponding angles. That's fifteen types of angles. So that is what uh, parallel lines and uh, and other segment by sectors can give us as far as uh, uh, angles is concerned. So apart from supplementary angles, we also have another angles that uh, can be extended by circle. For example, uh, let's say this is angle number 16. Circle provides us with another angle. Let's say that one is our radius and we have another radius there, an angle there, which is subtended by an arc of a circle inside the center of the circle. Such an angle is called central central angle. Central angle is that angle inside the circle. And then circle also provides another type of angle which uh, can be referred to as, uh, let me say, we have A, B, C. So angle, at angle to be A, C, that one, which is equal to let's say theta we can call that angle as our um inscribe you know inscribe in inscribe inscribe inscribed angle inscribed angle is the angle at the circumference at the circumference of the circle defined by two chords so you see these two chords define this one and the major I mean the minor arc there so when you consider that you get that inscribed angle but when you consider the min the minor arc plus the radius you get what is known as central angle inscribed angle but circle can also define furthermore angles for example you can have a tangent there touching the circle at one point and perpendicular to the radius and we can have another tangent here touching the circle at one point which is perpendicular to the radius so when this tangent extended like that and another one you know when they are extended they will meet at some point here and that will form an angle and that angle can be given a name as tangent tangent angle 
and that's our angle number 18 and from this tangent tangent angle you can draw another arc there so when you draw that arc it will form another angle there angle beta so angle beta is called chord you draw the chord there this is the chord line not an arc it's a, it's a chord although we have an arc of the circle there but this area is called the segment of the circle and that angle is formed as a result of that chord meeting the tangent here that's why it's called chord tangent angle that's our angle number 19 for our angle number 20 we can still use the same principle of the circle uh, but this time we can have like a uh, secant you know secant secant is like this line of chord extended uh, from this circumference of the circle so when you have two of them they can meet and this will form secant secant angle and this is our angle number 20 and then you can have a tangent and another secant there which will form an angle let's say alpha i mean let's say theta so that we can have like uh, let's say a b c i'm not naming the point because i'm just after the angle so this angle here is called secant tangent angle uh, secant tangent angle is our angle number 21 so that my friend i think we can stop here you can get as many angles as possible and we, 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 we shall look that we shall look at that when we continue in another video but i hope this has been informative and uh, thank you for viewing we have seen that uh, there are over 21 angles type as well as we have seen that to define an angle you need to enclose within uh, close an angle within two lines and enclose it with an arc of a circle to make an angle to be meaningful and any angle starts from zero degree that's why we have zero zero angle as well as 360 degree for a complete angle i hope this has been informative and thank you for viewing